In this example from your book, here's ethanoic acid, or vinegar, ionizing in water. The ethanoic acid is donating a proton and is, by the bronsted lowry definition, the acid. The water molecule is accepting that proton and is the bronsted lowry base. The ionization of ethanoic acid is only partial and not quantitative. Contrary though it sounds, a weak acid like ethanoic acid has a stronger hold on its proton than, say, hydrochloric acid, a strong acid. This partial ionization is indicated by the equilibrium double arrow. The products are hydronium ion and an ethanoate ion. This is the acid-base pair in the forward reaction, and this is the acid-base pair in the reverse reaction. The base product of ethanoic acid, the ethanoate ion, is referred to as the conjugate base, conjugate meaning linked together. So the acid on the reactant side will have a conjugate base on the product side. Likewise, the base on the reactant side will have a conjugate acid on the product side. Conjugate acid-base pairs in a chemical equations are easy to identify. They differ only by one proton. It seems that water can act as an acid or a base. Here, it's accepting a proton, so it's acting as a base. Earlier, it was donating a proton to a molecule of ammonia, so water was the acid. Water's not alone in this regard. Substances that act as bronsted lowry acids in one reaction and as bronsted lowry bases in another are known as amphiprotic substances. The hydrogen carbonate ion is also an example of an amphiprotic substance. Here it's acting as an acid by donating a proton to water. In this reaction, the hydrogen carbonate reacts with water like it's a base, accepting a proton to form carbonic acid. So when the hydrogen carbonate ion does react with water, which reaction is predicted to occur? It seems both are possible. But for all other acid-base reactions in this course, there is a general rule. The strongest acid reacts with the strongest base. To determine which is which, we need to refer to the data booklet. This is page 8 from your data booklet. The table extends to page 9. The first column has the common name for the acid followed by the IUPAC name. If you come across an acid in this course that you're required to know, it's on this table. The second column shows the acid's formula. The third column shows the formula of the acid's conjugate base, that is, the formula of the acid after it has donated its proton. The last column is the acid ionization constant, the Ka. Like the equilibrium constant, a very large Ka favors the products quantitatively. A very small Ka favors the reactants. As you can see, above the hydronium ion, the acids ionize quantitatively. Below the hydronium ion, the reactants are favored. There appears to be no in-between. The trends show that as you go down the page, the acids ionize less. That is, it becomes increasingly difficult for them to donate their proton and are, by definition, weaker acids. The trend continues on page 9 of your data booklet. Starting with the hydroxide ion at the bottom of page 9, the trend for the conjugate base is that they decrease in strength as they go up toward the top of the page. If the acid strength is decreasing as you go down the page, then it's obviously increasing as you go up the page. And likewise, the bases increase their capacity to accept protons, that is, become stronger bases, as you go down the page.
If you think this setup looks familiar, you'd be right. The table of reduction half reactions is similarly displayed, showing the strongest oxidizing agent at the top left and the strongest reducing agent on the bottom right. Additionally, it's more than a convenient coincidence that predicting acid-base reactions has to do with the position of the acid on this table in relation to the base. A directional arrow in the top left bottom right orientation indicates the acid reactant is above the base reactant and products are favored. The arrow indicating opposite means that the acid reactant is below the base reactant and reactants are favored. Let's make some generalizations about the acid-base reactions that will enable us to predict whether reactants or products are favored. Looking at your acid-base table in your data booklet, the first six acids listed have very high equilibrium constants. For all intents and purposes, we can assume they ionize completely. Even if the base is a weak one, the top six acids react completely. Strong bases also react completely. In this course, we will consider only the hydroxide ion as being a strong enough base to react with any acid completely. Metal hydroxides, such as sodium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide and so on, dissociate quantitatively under standard conditions. The hydroxide ion is a strong proton acceptor. If the acid-base reaction involves a weak acid and a weak base, then you look to the acid-base table in your data book and use the arrow convention. Top left, bottom right favors products. Bottom left, top right favors reactants.